Hello friends, today I'll try to answer 5 interesting frequently asked gardening questions. Questions like, does light really hurt your plant roots? And what happens when you expose roots to light? Do potted plants need soil change periodically? Do naphthalene mothballs contain the best and the most expensive rooting hormone that is naphthalene acetic acid? All that's coming up. If you are interested in gardening, please click on the bell icon to receive all notifications. Now let's begin with the first question. Can we put earthworms into soil of potted plants? The answer to this question is partly S. Yes. First of all, identify the useful worms like the red wrigglers. If S, yes, then you can drop a few into your container. But you must provide them with the moisture and the decaying matter for the worms to feed on. And then no to containers with small tender plants or even seedlings because these can be damaged by earthworms. Now moving on to the next question. Many gardeners say putting stones or a layer of gravel at the bottom of the plant container is useful and improves drainage. Actually it's a myth and does not help the plant and it actually takes up the space of the soil. If you want to prevent soil from washing out or coming out of the drainage holes, better use a piece of net cloth or a plastic mesh. But sometimes this layer of gravel can be useful and can prevent root rot. For instance, if you have drainage holes at the sides of your container, this can prevent water stagnation into the bottom zone where roots can be constantly wet in the stagnant water. As you can see in the illustration, raising this a bit with a layer of gravel helps encounter this issue. So it's always better to have a drainage hole at the bottom of your container. Okay, now moving on to the next question. Do potted plants need soil change periodically? As this is partly true, they do need repotting once in a while depending on the plant growth and performance. If you pay close attention to your plants, you will definitely find some signs that indicate your plant needs a repotting or a soil change. Like when plant has outgrown its container, that's called root bound plants. Then when the potting soil is compacted, you may not be able to insert your finger into it. Then when a plant keeps wilting often, even after a day or two, even after good watering. Then yellowing leaves and lack of new growth are also important signs. You can check my related video in, on the 10 golden rules of repotting from a link in the description of this video or at the end screen of this video. Regarding soil change, you can change the soil or recharge it by adding compost and other stuff and you even use the same soil if it's not compacted. You can check another related video on recharging your expired soil from a description link. Well, the next interesting and controversial question is, what happens when you expose roots to light? Does light really hurt your plant roots? This is in fact complicated and controversial. To get an answer to this question, let's look into few scenarios and concepts. And this can be also be very good high school project for kids. Like you grow similar plants in a transparent container and then with, within an opaque container. You consider these three scenarios. Growing a money plant into a transparent container. I'm sure all of us have done this. And here you have exposed roots to light, whether direct light or indirect light. Then you would have seen many plants where roots develop from aerial parts of the stem that's exposed to light. And this does a supportive function. Then roots can also be exposed to light naturally from cracks in the soil, from an earthquake, heavy rain and many other factors. I think the concern should be for the plant's root exposure to air and even the heat from sunlight that can cause drying and can damage your plant rather than the light itself causing any direct damage. But still, you are supposed to keep the roots in the dark because of algae growth due to light and your roots aren't getting enough oxygen because the algae is stealing the oxygen and nutrients for itself. So, light as such does not hurt the roots, but air, heat and algae hurt the roots and the plant. Actually, university researchers have shown that even roots have light photoreceptors in them and terms like positive phototropism and negative phototropism and much more. If you're interested in full journal articles of these studies, I provided a link to download these articles in the description. Then the next question, do naphthalene balls or moth balls contain naphthalene acetic acid, which is the best rooting hormone? 
Or can these naphthalene balls be used on plants as rooting agents or as pesticides? Well, the answer to the first part of the question is a straight no. Naphthalene acetic acid or indolbutric acid are auxins and are entirely different compounds. But when it comes to the benefits or the use of moth balls on plants or in garden, you should know that the how these moth naphthalene balls work. The vapors released by these moth balls build up and kill the moths in your clothes. They are in fact good pest repellents around your garden, but these can be toxic to your pets and kids if ingested by them. So there we have it folks, please like, share and comment on the video. Consider subscribing if you are new to the channel. Happy gardening!